Crossroads. Each Crossroads story is based on the actual experiences of American clergymen, pastor, priest, or rabbi, the men who give inspiration and guidance to people at the crossroads of life. These dramatic stories are presented with the cooperation of our Board of Advisors, Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum. And now, for our story. This is Boys Town, Nebraska. It stands as a monument to a great man, Father Edward J. Flanagan. Here, hundreds of boys of all ages gathered from underprivileged environments find a home, sympathetic understanding, and an education. But another boy in a town 2,000 miles away was sorely in need of a little understanding and education. Gotta go out again, Grandmother? It ain't no party I'm going to. When will you be back? When I finish my work, that's when. If I can find the strength to get through with my mopping another night and scrubbing. The ice box is empty. Ain't no good fairy around here to keep it filled. But what am I gonna have for supper? I'm hungry. You're always hungry. That's all I hear from morning till night. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I can't help it, Grandma. Honest. I try not to be hungry. Oh, to think at my age I should be burdened like this. Me, who's entitled to my rest, after raising a family of my own, to have you landed in my lap. I try not to be a burden, Grandma. I try. Awful hard. Oh, sometimes I think I was born under a dark star or something. It's what I've had to go through all my life. Never no luck. I'm sorry, Grandma. Don't you like me? At all? Well, I suppose it ain't all your fault. Not with the kind of father that brought you into the world. But I should think a boy your age would be able to take care of himself a little. To bring a little something into the house. To help with his keep. But nobody won't give me nothing to do, Grandma. You sound just like your father. He had excuses, too. For everything. Well... If you're hungry, you have to stay hungry until I come back from work. Oh, 
I've got you cold. Please, I was hungry. I didn't mean to do wrong. You're going to jail for this young man. No, please, no. I don't want to go to jail. I'll be good honest. Are you tired of clicking through the commercials? Watch Commercial Free on Patreon. The link is below this video in the description box. And now back to the show. statement when he told you in his summation that this boy has no defense for the crime with which he is charged and for which he is on trial for his life. No defense? Do you remember in his testimony when his honor asked him the question, Robert, why did you enter that store? Do you remember his answer? I was hungry. Well, that is his defense, that he was hungry. For it is the God-given right of any 12-year-old child in this bountiful land of ours not to be hungry. Not to be abandoned, not to be half-naked and shivering with cold. Consider this boy. He never even knew his mother. His father is confined in an institution for the insane after having killed a woman in a fury of violence. Do you remember the testimony concerning the home life of this boy? He lived in the direst poverty with his aged grandmother, who was too frail to provide for her own ones, to say nothing of caring for him. Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, it is not this boy that should be on trial here today for a crime against society. It is rather society that should be on trial here, charged with a crime against this boy. And you, Your Honor, a new gentleman of the jury are, along with myself, members of that society which has failed this boy so miserably. On our heads be it. Has the jury arrived at a verdict? We have, Your Honor. How do you find the defendant? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty as charged, Your Honor but with a recommendation for mercy. So say all of you? Yes, Your Honor. Does the defendant desire to address the court at this time? The defendant desires to offer nothing, Your Honor. Robert Purdy, rise. It is a sentence of this court that you be remanded into the custody of the sheriff of this county. And then in due course, to be delivered by him into the custody of the warden of the state penitentiary. There you're to be incarcerated for the remainder of your natural life. 2,000 miles away, Father Edward J. Flanagan of Boys Town was aroused by this tragic case. Monstrous. Incredible. You sound like a disaster, Father Flanagan. Don't tell me Notre Dame lost. Did you read this article in the paper about that 12-year-old boy? Convicted of murder and sentenced to prison for life? I don't get much time to read the papers, Father. The whole country should read it. Read it and reread it. I'll be more than a baby. Thrown into a penitentiary like a common criminal. Did the judge and jury that convicted him realize the extent of their own crime? Now, Father, you're here for a complete rest. Rest? How can I lie here resting with something like this in my conscience? Someone has to do something for that boy before it's too late. You've been doing too much as it is. That's why you're in the hospital. Get me my clothes. Well, at least let me call the doctor. You're in no condition to get out of bed. I'm out of bed, and I'll be on the next train. If it means the saving of just one boy from injustice and ignorance.
having the boy brought into your father so you can talk to him privately. What has been his reaction to his imprisonment, Warden? Oh, no trouble at all. Does he realize what's happened to him? Oh, I don't know. After all, he's only a kid. Yes, just say he, he is only a kid. Well, we have that in mind all the time. I'm making special arrangements for him after he comes out of isolation. You mean that boy has been put in a cell alone? Day and night, no one can go near him? I don't make the prison rules, Father. I can't change them. Everyone must spend the first 26 days when they come here in isolation. Yes, but this person is a boy, a child. The law doesn't say anything about making allowances for children. It only stipulates how I must govern the prisoners when they arrive at the penitentiary. What happens when he gets out of isolation? Well, of course, he won't be permitted to associate with the other prisoners and... Uh, do you have any other 12-year-olds inside these walls? No, oh, well, of course not. It's unbelievable. A 12-year-old child should be thrown into a cell, deprived completely of any contact with fellow human beings of his own age and intelligence, surrounded by hardened criminals. That's a disgrace to society. It would have been a disgrace to the Dark Ages. A boy like that would be in school. He should have a home. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid this isn't very much like a home. But I do have authority to get special teachers so that you'll have some schooling. Hello, Bobby. How are you? This is fine, Mr. Warden. You have a visitor, Bobby. He's come a long way to see you. I have? He has. You know who he is? Some kind of preacher, ain't he? At least he looks like one. Father Flanagan from Boys Town. Where's that? I never heard of it. What's a Boys Town? Well, it's a place where no one lives with boys. Like you, Bob. Gee, no grown-ups around to tell you what to do? <laughs> Not exactly. But they manage to have a pretty good time. I'll leave you alone, Father. Thank you. Sit down, Bob. Do you uh, like it here? Oh, swell. Everybody's nice to me, and I get lots to eat. But I'm glad it's all over, that I don't have to go back in that old courtroom anymore and have people gawking at me the way they did and asking me questions. You didn't see my grandmother, did you? Uh, no, I didn't. Well, I guess she did pack up and lie out like she said she was going to. Well, it seems she moved out of the place you used to live. And that's because I disgraced her. She said she was going away when nobody would ever find her. The minute she could sell her furniture, didn't have much furniture, I mean, and nothing else. When did she tell you that, son? The day the judge told me I'd have to come here. They wanted me to say that I was crazy, and that's why I did it. But I'm not, so I wouldn't say it. Would you say that you were crazy if you knew you weren't? No, I certainly would not. I didn't mean to shoot Mr. Moore. Honest. I'm sure you didn't. Which would you rather, get hung? We're sent up here for life. You, uh, you think about things like that? Oh, sure. I thought about it a lot, in jail, back home. First, I thought it better to be hung. Then I got thinking, if I got hung, I wouldn't be able to play my mouth organ. You want to hear me? Oh, yes, if you want to play it for me. Oh, I play all the time. And to myself. It's about all I got to do in here. I'm getting pretty good. Want to hear another? Well, I'm afraid I won't be here that long. Well, I don't know the other one very good anyhow. You come back and see me again? Sometime? A great many times, I hope. Uh, Robert, if... Now, just here for a minute. If I could arrange it, would you like to come and live with me at Boys Town? Well, I don't know. The judge told me I'd have to live here for the rest of my life. Would he let me go? Well, he might, under certain conditions. What's it like, Boys Town? Well, I have almost 300 boys. Many of them just your age. What do they do? Well, they do what 
boys do who live anywhere else. Go to school, play games. We have a football team, baseball team. We even have a band. Gee, could I get in the band, do you think? Of course, right now, I can't play anything but the mouth organ. But I could learn the cornet, maybe. I'm sure you could. I think you could learn anything you put your mind to. You ain't kidding, are you? About asking the judge to let me go about that boy's town? No, Bob, I'm not kidding. I was never more serious in my life. And what if the judge says no? I promise you, Bob, I'm going to do everything in my power to make him say yes. Maybe the mother boys you're talking about won't want nothing to do with me on account of I'm a criminal. In boys' town, Bob, there are no criminals. We have only boys. We forget what they were or where they came from before they came to live with us. I'm sorry, Father. It's all right. Well, goodbye, Bob. Remember now, I'll be seeing you. It's more than kind of you, Mrs. Sands, to invite me into your home and lend me the weight of your assistance. It is this community that should be grateful to you, Father Flanagan, for crystallizing the protest against what has been done to that poor boy. Thank goodness you have come and can speak with a voice greater than mine to a much greater audience. Then you believe with me that the Robert Purdy case should be reopened? Oh, completely. It's a blot on the honor of our state to send a mere baby to prison for life. A child who's only the victim of his surroundings, as the testimony at his trial proved. Why, he should get care and assistance, not punishment. Uh, Judge Hadley, do you think that any boy of 12 can be said to have criminal tendencies? That is a matter for the sociologist and psychiatrist, Father Flanagan. I'm speaking as a jurist who is forced to administer the law according to the code. However, I'm of the opinion that the force of the law should be directed toward the return of such juveniles safely to society. As I understand it, from what I've read in the newspapers, you'd like to have me release this boy into your custody. Yes, Governor, I would. Evidently, Father Flanagan, you feel that you're better fitted to bring about the rehabilitation of this boy, if it can be brought about, than the authorized authorities of the state. Your Excellency, I can only say that I have charge of 300 boys. Many of them are boys who, before they came to me, were believed to have had criminal tendencies. But in all my experience, I have never known one who became a criminal by choice. And heredity? You think that plays no part in the formation of a boy's character? A thousand times, no. The case of this boy has troubled me greatly, Father. On the one hand, I'm confronted by the letter of the law, and on the other, by pleadings of people like yourself, Father Flanagan, and Mrs. Sands. I beg of you, sir, give me this boy, and I'll return him to you a man, a whole man. I'll give earnest consideration to your pleadings, Father, and to yours, Mrs. Sands. I'm grateful, sir, for your courtesy. I think you almost convinced him. Oh, isn't there something else we can do? Do you pray, Mrs. Sands? Oh, yes, Father, I do. That's something we can do. How about it, Father Flanagan? I hear all around that you're not really concerned over Robert as you make out. I didn't get up out of a sick bed to come here for a vacation. They say you jumped into this kid's case as a great publicity stunt for you and for your boys' town. A man who would seek to profit from the plight of this unfortunate boy is no man at all, but a human hyena. Certainly not a priest. But they're saying that all this publicity can't hurt boys' town either, Father. All this front page coverage for over a month. I bitterly resent the things they are saying. Boys Town needs no publicity. It stands on the record of its achievement. They are trying to divert attention from the real issue involved, the tragedy of Robert. 
by laying down a smoke screen of accusations against my motives. There's a rumor around the state house that the political enemies of the governor are responsible for you being here. Yeah, the story is the other side feel this Bobby case is a political dynamite. It could blast the present administration right out of office. So they brought you in to do the blasting. How about that, Father? Completely false. I came here on my own initiative and for one purpose. To attempt to secure the parole of Robert into my custody. I'm not at all concerned with the political ramifications involved. I am concerned with the frightening problem of one 12-year-old boy, as it affects all boys. But I understand there are certain prominent sociologists in this town who have advised the governor that uh, Bobby is beyond hope of redemption. That's right. In their opinion, the kid's a born criminal and can never be anything else. Give me the names of these prominent nincompoops and I'll expose them for the charlatans they are. I have 300 boys who will rise up and call them liars. I have the weight of every prominent sociologist in the world on my side. How do you get around the fact that there's no precedent for granting Bobby's parole to you? Well, there is a precedent, gentlemen. An unanswerable precedent. Can you quote it to us, Father? We couldn't dig it up. You didn't look in the right place. Suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, here it comes. Okay, Joe, shoot. What? That's it, Joe? That's his whole statement? Sorry, Father. No soap. Take this down, Frank. Give it to me again, Joe. The parole of Robert Purdy, now serving a life sentence for the crime of murder, is denied. Oh boy. I've got to hand it to you, Father. You put up a whale of a fight for him. You don't think I'm giving up my fight for him, do you? But you must carry on the battle here, in the front lines. You must fight grimly and tirelessly until you have won. Until you have made sure the boy gets proper education and environment in his prison until you have made it impossible that any other child shall ever face the same punishment inflicted on this boy. You must take him as your symbol and never for one instant forget him and what he represents. You have the full strength of my support and my prayers. Father Flanagan was with you. Maybe he was going to come to take me to Boys Town. I'm afraid not, Bobby. You mean I'm not going? The judge said no? Well, not for a while, anyway. I bet it would have been nice, Christmas at Boys Town. You know, I never had a Christmas nowhere. You're going to have one this year, Bobby ice cream, turkey, and lots of presents. I, I've been practicing real hard to get into Father Flanagan's band. I even learned a new piece. But I guess he ain't going to hear it now. You play it for me, Bobby. I'd like to hear it. You would? Yeah. Robert remained in jail, but through Father Flanagan's efforts, he was given an academic education and when released, joined the armed forces. A law was finally passed, amending the penal code of the state, making it impossible that there ever again could be another like case. Father Flanagan, who always fought for his belief that there is no such thing as a bad boy. Stories for Crossroads are selected by our Board of Advisors, Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum.